Hello Vinaka and welcome again to the Time Sports Show. Uh, different uh, kind of setup here today. We are here at uh, Natunuku village uh, in Ba. Uh, we are told this is the first village uh, in Ba when you enter towards Tavua. And uh, today it's about Ba rugby. When you talk about Ba, it's, uh, Ba has always been known as the soccer town, the traditional champions of Fiji soccer uh, as well. Uh, you name any tournament, the Fiji Fat Battle of the Giants or, or the IDC or the CVC, Ba has the most wins. But the Ba rugby side are making a name for themselves uh, in the rugby field uh, right now. Uh, for those who don't know, they have qualified for the Skipper Cup competition. Not qualified, they have been promoted, they have gained their spot in the top competition of provincial rugby in Fiji and they will be part of the Skipper Cup competition next year. And to talk more about Ba rugby, we have uh, their strategy planner. Uh, I wouldn't say a new face to rugby or a new face to uh, media, Jeremy Duxbury. He's, uh, he's been uh, quite a hand in uh, getting Bar Rugby to where they are today. And uh, today we are at his place uh, in Bar. Jeremy, thank you for your time. Thank you for speaking to the Fiji Times. Um, firstly, we'll start on uh, how, how you got to know about Bar Rugby and uh, uh, where was Bar Rugby when you took over? Uh, thank you, Rahit. Um well, it's interesting because I didn't plan it at all. I, I found this uh, place where I live on Fiji Times Classified um, and it was during lockdown so I hadn't visited the place and I was leaving Europe coming back to Fiji um, and I found this place and decided to take a punt. Um, so when we when we arrived here, it was the first, after we'd bought it, it was the first time we'd seen it. Um, and I had no intentions of really getting back into rugby it wasn't it wasn't on my uh, schedule at all um, but then after after we settled here which is only earlier this year um, I was talking to the boys in the village who, who come and do some work here and they asked me if I could help their, their team sponsor their uniforms so we started talking about the, their village side Natunuku and um, I got in contact with Bar Rugby and wanted the schedule and in response they said oh uh, do you want to join our committee <laughs> so I said oh, okay we'll see um, and at the time I thought well Bar, Bar Rugby all the years I've been in Fiji since 1998 Bar was always a minor union it was never in the majors it was never in the TFL Cup the Digital Cup the Sanya Cup any of those always in the B division and it never really bar never really challenged either it was never really like on the verge so but I, I couldn't really understand why it's such a big province it's huge um, so it's got a high population there's a lot of Fijian villages up in the highlands it has a lot of corporate support um, and you have a lot of good players that come out of bar. It's not like nobody comes out of bar. You, you have the two solvers, you have the Pio Tavares, you have the Vili Monitellas house. Um, so there was no reason why bar couldn't go up. It must uh, So uh, yes, I joined, I joined in April. Um, and then De La Salle became head coach. You know, I've, he and I go back a long way. He was the first colour interview I did for, for Tevova magazine back in 2001. The first, first rural feature I did on Sorokon Bar and De La Salle when he first hit the scene. Um, so, so it's nice to come back home in a way. It's my home now. And, um, and uh, I, I, th I had visions of this year just watching and seeing, uh, trying to understand how things were. Uh, but the secretary, Pastor Gabi uh, Kaltonga, he had very similar uh, views to myself and Delisa, where we get everybody involved. Uh, we, we go up to the highlands, we went up to Mongondro, which is Bukuya, and the Sivikoso village is right near um, Nandi and, and, um, and Navosa. And we also went up to um, Savatu, which is Nandarivatu, which is like two hours drive. Um, and we want to get them involved and bring them in. And the biggest hurdle is, is, um, is finance for travel, travel expense. So we try to subsidize where we can. Um, to get them involved. We don't want that to be a barrier to, to them playing in, in bar rugby. Um, so we had our club rugby competition, finished a couple of weeks ago, went very, very well, um, with 24 clubs. And at the same time, the, uh, De La Salle and Bombo were coaching the, the bar men's team and 
uh, you know, very, very proudly for the first time in 26 years reached the, reached the Skipper Cup. So that's everybody's talking about bar rugby here now. All the taxi drivers, the carriers, they want to know when we, you know, when we're playing. So they, and the, the juice makers and the rotty salesmen, they all want to know when the games are on. You know? So it's uh, it's been a marvelous year, and and we're probably ahead of where we thought we'd be by by this time. Mm. As mentioned, Bar had uh, in, uh, when it came to sports, Bar was always known for soccer. Uh, I'm pretty sure there were a lot of players who had been playing soccer. I'm pretty sure many players that you have now had played soccer before for many of the clubs here. Uh, how how was that challenge? How did you overcome that challenge of uh, I, I wouldn't say stealing them from soccer, but uh, getting to grow their interest in rugby? Um, we haven't really. I mean, obviously, Bar soccer is huge and always has been, um, and we haven't. Uh, I mean, we've been our players have been um, hiring the, the, the Fiji soccer gym um, because we don't have a gym of our own um, and Govin Park is not open yet so uh, we've been playing all our games at Vinod Patel Park which is by the market um, and just it's like an open field it's a bit like Albert Park you know um, and I don't know if players are coming through from soccer I mean you have players like Dora Sese who was he did school in bar and he went to A.D. Patel College and he was a soccer player all until he got to uh, uh, Nandranga and then he switched to, to rugby um, but I, and I think bar soccer are quite proud of that fact that, and especially his kick at the end of the of the uh, Georgia game he showed his soccer skills anybody else might have you know made a hash at that <laughs> so. and now into the skipper cup competition the, the challenge gets uh, more challenging I would say uh, with teams like Nanronga and you've seen how tough the skipper cup is this year yeah. and how tough the how close the results were yeah. uh, what, what are the steps being taken to get up to par with the top teams in the country? Yeah, we're under no illusions there. We know it's a big step up. When we see teams like Nandi and Naita Siri, Suva and Andranga, they've been there for 50, 60 years. They've had all that experience. They've had all that, um, all that learning. Um, all the facilities they must have and the coaches they must have compared with Bar. You know? So we are a long way behind them in, in, that, in those terms. Uh, so we are pretty determined that, that we, we want to get up there and compete. We don't want to be one of those yo-yo teams that go up and down. You know? um, so the first step we've got, and we planned it earlier this year, but we've just been working out uh, the details, is our Takina Championship. And that'll start later this month in October. Uh, where we have eight Tekina and they will play at uh, men's, women's and junior level. And um, that's a big step because for the selectors, it's a step between club rugby and bar rugby. So for, the, for De La Salle and Bombo, they have to watch their eight men's teams rather than 24 or 32 men's teams. Uh, so it's a, it's a pathway to the bar tie. And and we need to do that because it's such a big province. A smaller province, you wouldn't need to do it so much. But um, so you have Mangondro right at the top. You have uh, Savatu right at the other side. They get together, and they bring their teams down to to Divino Patel Park. Um, and. You know, we, we think that there's quite a lot of interest here. It's a brand new tournament. We've got new teams, new new uniforms, new sponsors, which which we'll announce in time. Uh, and we think that uh, it's a, it's a good model. We think it's based a little bit on the old Colonial Cup, and that's the Colonial Cup lifted Fiji into the 2007 World Cup quarterfinals. Really, that was on the basis of the Colonial Cup. A lot of those players came through the Colonial Cup. Um, so it's the same principle, really, but only at a provincial level. Uh, Jeremy, you see uh, successful teams, like you said, you don't want to be a your team going up and down. You see successful teams like Nandi, Nandronga, Anita Siri. Mm -hmm. They have a good uh, club base, mm -hmm. they have good club base competition. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the Tikina competition coming up, the Tikina championship. Uh, but to stay in the competition and to be level up with the big guns, uh, there needs to be grassroots development. Uh, the, the club teams need to be assisted. Uh, are any steps taken uh, to, to do that? Yes, well, uh, we're going to use the Tikina uh, as development centres. So the idea is that we get a, a scrum machine in each of the Tikinas so that they can train as a Tikina as well as the clubs and they don't all have to come down to, to, to the bar town to, to train. Um, and hopefully we, we'd like to have referee clinics and, and coaching clinics in those Tikina. Uh, as, as much as possible, if possible once a year. So they become 
um, mini centres of excellence in their own in their own part, and, and that takes money. But that was our that's our development plan where we we look if we look after those Tikina then when they come down into the Tikina Cup or even the club rugby they'll already be at a much higher level and then when they get into the bar team they will know should be to know how to scrum and they're not starting from scratch mm. um, so so the Tikina championships it it's not just for the players it's a pathway for the coaches and the managers um, to uh, and the management teams as well um, to so that bar rugby can see the best coaches and the, the best managers and who should be involved with the bar team so it's not just the, you know, the ones that we're using at the moment we we might find through the Tikina championship that we've got some other very strong coaches or very strong managers who will who will show themselves and you know hopefully uh, then join the bar team management mm. speaking of coaches and officials uh, how fortunate are you to have uh, uh, people uh, with calibers of uh, in the likes of uh, Philemon in Dallas how and Cyril Bomba of course they played together at, at the rugby world cup and but uh, how, how have their contribution assisted in Well, that's, it, that's immeasurable because um, I, I don't think there's any other coaching duo with the experience that Dells and Bombo have got in Fiji at the moment. Uh, you, if you look at their professional careers, both lasted almost 20 years, probably. Longer for maybe Bombo, he's still fit. Um, and they've been all over the world. So they've played professionally in Japan and New Zealand and France and Bombo played in Spain and Portugal before that. So they've done a lot of professional rugby. They've seen so many different systems. So when we talk about high performance in bar, they're the only ones with any experience in high performance. You know? So what they give to the team is just, um, I mean, yes, we're completely blessed with that. Mm. I don't quite know what we have, would have done without them. So. Unfortunately, De La Salle, he's a, you know, he's a, he's born, he's bred here in, uh, in Sorokomba. So, um, you know, he's a bar boy in that respect. Mm. Finally, any team, uh, I would say, would not uh, progress without its fans. Uh, the fan base is quite important. How has the response been from fans and uh, what was the response after they gained promotion to the Skipper Cup? Yeah, well, see, the, we've, we've had about 1,000, 1,500 fans coming down for our Saturday Club Rugby. And it, it, because of the location of Vinopatel Park, it's right next to the bus stand and market, so it's very easy to go. You don't have to get another bus to go out there. Um, so that's been a bonus, um, and we're pleasantly surprised, you know, that, that there's been so much interest. And as the bar team has progressed, and we had our quarterfinals, our semifinals, and finals all in Tavor, which is you know half an hour from bar. Uh, so we actually stopped our club rugby for those weekends because the the fans, the the, the players from the uh, the club players wanted to go and support the bar team. It's the first time in their lifetime that they've had a chance to get up to the Skipper Cup. They didn't want to miss it. So that's why our club rugby sort of went on a bit longer than it should have done because we we kept on delaying it so that you know to support the bar team. So. Hmm. All right, Jeremy, thank you so much for your time and uh, we'd like to wish the bar team all the very best for, for the Tikina Championship that's coming up and of course uh, the 2024 Skipper Cup competition. I'm pretty sure other teams are already keeping an eye out for bar <laughs> and what they'll bring to the competition. Well, there you go, uh, a bit of a of uh, something different today with the Rugby World Cup going on and all. We're not uh, forgetting our teams that are playing in the Provincial Championship. And following that weekend, we have uh, the Bar Tikina Championship starting here in Ba. Uh, we'll be sure to stay uh, following us as we bring you the latest updates from Rugby World Cup and the um, Bar Tikina Championship. And remember to watch the Bar side as they compete in the first ever <laughs> Skipper Cup competition next year. From Ba, Misamode.